This is going to be a short introduction to industrial wires control panels. I am using build 1.515, which is the latest. I published a few hours ago. What I'm doing should work for any build above 12. Uh, the, other, the earlier builds have the same concept, but some details are a bit different. The first step is to create a control panel creator. It's just a normal crafting recipe, an electric motor from IC2, an iron drill head from Immersive Engineering, some more stuff from the two mods. Yeah, you need one of those. I'm gonna put that here. And you will need a control an unfinished control panel. In earlier builds this was just a machine frame, a machine casing, but now I'm using unfinished control panels. These are also just normal crafting. Then you are going to need an engineer's workbench to configure the unfinished control panel. You don't have to do this, but you can configure the height. So you can get one that is this high. And I'm gonna need an iron pick now, a diamond pick. Or, well, anything should work, any decently useful pickaxe. And, yeah, you can make them higher, you can make them angled. As you see, the angle didn't go all the way up to 100% here because uh, the height is not 50%. 100% angle means 45 degrees, like this. But I'm going to make just a box standard flat control panel, so 50% angle, 50% height. You put that in here, in the left, and as the next thing, you're going to need some components from industrial wires. Except I can't type properly. So, we're just going to use light buttons and indicator lights now, but the other components are very neat, especially the panel meters. You right-click the component in the air and you get one of these little configura configuration screens with a bunch of settings. Color, you have that for pretty much any component. Latching is only for buttons and key switches, lock switches. This just changes whether the button turns off after half a second or whether it stays on till you turn it off. These are the important bits. The redstone, the color of the redstone channel this is outputting to and the ID of the redstone wire controller will get into that later. So for now we'll just leave it as it is, white for the output channel and we'll set orange, no, orange as an input, as an input channel. You can change the color here. It will update once you close the GUI. So now we have a yellow indicator light. It's sort of an LED and a red lighted button. We can place these in the control panel creator here. Just randomly, we can say snap new components to the grid, which will, yeah, snap them to a 16 by 16 grid making it easier to align them. And once we have finished placing the components, we, we click C, create a new control panel. Now we have the panel. As you can see, there are two components on there. Next, we'll need some panel connectors and some redstone wire controllers. We place down a redstone wire controller. This is going to be what interacts with the redstone wires here. Just, you have to shift click to connect them to the controller. Otherwise you'll get this little GUI here. We'll use that later. Or maybe we won't. Um, and if we have the connectors which yeah, connect the panel to the controller. You can, can place them directly next to each other and you can use panels as connectors and controllers as connectors but I tend to use actual connectors. I just had to change around some of these outputs and inputs because I didn't think about what I had set up beforehand when I made this panel. So we have this button and it lights up the white redstone channel signal thingy as we set it to. And we have an orange input connector. You have to actually check this blue ring in here indicates whether it's input blue or output orange. Yeah, you have to see. You have to remember that when you set them up and 
the light is now lit because we close this breaker and it emits a redstone signal. Yeah, I have sounds turned off, otherwise we'd hear the nice sound die made. And yeah, if we turn the breaker off, we don't get a lit signal here, otherwise we'd get a lit signal. Next we are going to control multiple different networks with one control panel. We have one network here which we have been using and another one over here. And we could be using 16 channels on both networks but I'm using only three because honestly 16 channels is just gonna get messy. So we need some more panel components. Uh, yeah, two buttons and two lights. One button will... S oh yes, you can place them on the ground now. That was not intended. Um, yeah, we'll set this one to white. No, yeah, white on network 1. This one to white on network 2, on controller 2. The tooltip is kind of going out of the view here. And we'll set this one to latching as well, because why not? And we make it pink, or lilac, or whatever that is. And this is going to be orange on channel z, channel z no, connector ID, controller ID 0, that's it. And this one is orange on controller ID 1. And we should make that some other color as well, some turkeys or something. We'll just place these randomly on here. It's another unfinished control panel from the creative, well, from JEI that is. And we'll place that here. The connect, the breaker here is still closed, so as we just saw the green light lit up. And now we'll connect another redstone wire controller. We'll set the ID to 1. Oh yes, I have more here. And we'll connect that over to here. If we press the red button, only this one lights up, not that one over there. If you press the lilac button, this one doesn't light up, but this one does. And yeah, this breaker switch only turns on the green indicator. This one only turns on the turquoise indicator. Yeah, that's how you control multiple different wire networks with just one panel. Just one last thing. One component is a bit special, the lock switch. It, yeah, it's basically a lock that turns on a redstone signal, so you need the proper key for it. You can make blank keys, just like this. Locks and all other components are just box standard crafting recipes. You can, yeah, you place the lock switch and the blank key in a crafting window to create a key that actually fits the lock. And you can name the key. We'll just hit the keyboard once and get some nice names. So this we can now place on the control panel. This outputs to white on zero. Well, there it is. Create a new control panel with that and we'll place it here. This, yeah, you can just put in the key and shift right click to get it back out. This can be set to be latching as well, but we didn't do that. And another thing, the key ring, you can add keys to that. Okay, I only have one right now, but you could cycle through the keys by shift clicking, shift right clicking, and then you can place it in the inner lock matching the key you have selected. So, yeah just like that.